Oh, this is going to be fun. Hi everyone, I'm JD. If you're new to oil painting or thinking about wanting to give it a try, this video is for you. Today I'm going to show you how to get started, the materials, and the steps I go through from start to finish. This is going to include preparing the canvas, the paints, the brushes, homemade mediums, a time-lapse video of an oil painting, and finally the very important part of the process, cleaning those brushes. I'll show you some of the materials I use and what I would recommend if you're just starting out. Also, I've added a list of materials in the description box down below, so check that out. Now hit that subscribe and bell notification button, and let's get started. With oil paints, there's so many choices out there. I'm going to keep this super easy and simple for you to get started. All you need to get started is six colors. Now I don't recommend generic paints, as they tend to be very unreliable and can be frustrating to learn with. So, pick a name brand that offers student-grade oil paints. For example, the Winton Series, which is a Windsor Newton product that comes in more colors than you'll ever need. And no, I'm not sponsored by them, I just happen to have lots of experience with their oils. If you tried other brands or if you have a preference for a particular brand, let me know in the comments tell me about it. If you're just starting out, you want six basic colors. You'll want your primary colors of red, yellow, and blue. And be sure to add raw umber, or you can substitute that with a burnt umber. You'll need burnt sienna, and of course titanium white. Now stay away from black, and I'll explain that in a minute. You can buy these individually or in box sets but you want to keep your palette to a minimum of colors. Seriously, don't go crazy in buying all types of colors. Keep to the basics for now. As far as your primary colors, try to pick up a French ultramarine blue, a cadmium lemon yellow, and a cadmium red. Of course, you'll need your titanium white, your raw umber, and your burnt sienna. So why did I not include black? Most beginners will use black to make grays or darken colors, which will give the painting a very dull, unnatural look. By mixing ultramarine blue and raw umber, you're going to get a color that is so dark and full of life to add to mixing. You'll see a huge difference in your painting when you learn to mix colors without using black. You'll absolutely love it. So stay away from black. Now that you've got your paints, let's move on to brushes. Have you seen the brush section at the art stores? So many brushes! Ah! Before you go crazy with confusion, keep this in mind. This oil paint of an apple was done with the use of only one brush. Yeah, only one brush. How cool is that? I'd used a Filbert Hog Hair No. 8 brush for the entire painting, everything from the background to the details. So keep your brush stash to a minimum when you're starting out and experiment with the possibilities of what each brush can do. Here's what I recommend you start out with. Get a couple Filbert Hog Hair brushes, the long handle ones, a number 4, a number 8, and a number 12. And get a Filbert Synthetic brush, long handles, number 4, number 8, and any small round detail brush to sign your name with. You'll need a synthetic fan brush, number four. And get a couple palette knives. I use one palette knife strictly for mixing paints and mediums together, and then I use a smaller palette knife just to scoop it up medium and put a couple drops on whatever paint I'm using next. Now we're going to need a medium to mix into our paints. Since you can't mix water with oil paints, you're going to need a medium that mixes well with the paints. There are three ways you can do this. The first two ways involve linseed oil, which is the most common medium used and it's not toxic. You don't need a lot, a little goes a long way. Adding it to your paints will make the paints more flexible and maneuverable on your canvas. It's also a slow drying agent. Your paints will dry slow, days, weeks, even months, depending on how much you add. Let's start off with medium option number one, which is the cheapest way, and it's used only for learning purposes. Don't use it when you're painting something that you really want to keep for a long time. Just use this for learning purposes. It does the same thing. Head to the hardware store and purchase boiled linseed oil and paint there, or turpentine or mineral spirits, whichever it comes in. And with the appropriate ratio mixture, you're going to make three separate homemade mediums in three sealable glass jars. And you'll want to mark them accordingly. I'll explain more about this in the second medium option, which is up next. But these three jars will contain measured out specific amounts of linseed oil and mineral spirits to make your homemade medium method number one. So for example, in the first jar, it's going to contain one part linseed oil, two parts mineral spirits. So the second jar will contain one, one part linseed oil and one part mineral spirits. The third jar will contain two parts linseed oil and one part mineral spirits. The second homemade method is exactly the same as the first method, except you're going to be using artist-grade products that you get from an art store. The artist-grade products I'm talking about is the Gamblin Stand Linseed Oil, and the Gamblin Odorless Mineral Spirits. Now whether you use the first medium method number one or the second medium method, the ratios are exactly the same for each jar. So in jar number one, you want one part linseed oil, 
two parts mineral spirits. In the second jar, you want one part linseed oil, and you want one part mineral spirits. The third jar contains two parts linseed oil and one part mineral spirits. The reason for the different jars and ratios is for the fat over lean method. Let's say your painting is going to take more than one painting session. So for the first session, you'll want to use jar number one when mixing a medium with your paints. During the next session, when you return to your painting, you're going to reuse jar number two when mixing a medium with your paints. And if you add a third session to your painting, you'll use jar number three when mixing a medium with your paints. This is called the fat over lean method, which is a standard process for oil painting. I'll get into more about the fat over lean in a follow-up video. The third medium method is another very common method used by oil painters. But unlike the first two methods, this will speed up your drying time significantly. The medium is called Liquid Original, which happens to be a Windsor Newton product. It's a fast drying medium that you mix with your paints that helps speed up the drying time of your painting. Now the big question is, no matter which medium you decide to try, how much medium do you add to your paints to mix with? Well, that's a personal preference you'll have to discover for yourself. All I can recommend is that you start off by only adding one or two drops of medium to your paints. Mix it in with a palette knife until you're satisfied with the better consistency you desire to paint with. Now what about a palette? No worries, I got you covered with a cheap, simple, and easy palette setup. All you're going to need is wax paper and masking tape. Tear off about a foot and a half, tape down the corners, there you go, a simple palette that you can toss out when you're done. Now for the palette in this picture, what it is is there's a board underneath, some white paper, on top of the white paper is a gray sheet of paper. Now that acts as a neutral color that you put your wax paper on top of for your paints. And then I just taped everything down. Now let's talk about your canvas. No matter what painting surface you decide to apply oil paints, it's essential to prepare it with gesso. What is gesso? Basically it's an acrylic and glue primer that seals your canvas to prevent your oils from seeping through. If the oils seep through, it will ultimately destroy your canvas, losing your painting forever. Even the pre-gessoed or pre-primed ready-to-paint on canvases you get from the local art store, you still have to prepare it properly with an additional coat of gesso, and I'll show you why in a minute. But first, if you notice that your brand new canvas is loose and has too much give to it, here's a simple and easy way to fix it. Flip it over onto a table and lightly spray the back of the canvas with water. Use a mister, it's so much easier. Make sure you get it in the corners as well. Use your hand to lightly spread the mist everywhere and let it dry overnight. The next morning, the canvas will be perfectly stretched. Gessoing your canvas is pretty straightforward. Here I have a brand new store-bought pre-gessoed canvas, gesso from an art store, and a two-inch painter's brush. Start off by gessoing the sides first. But you wanna know what happens if you don't gesso a store-bought pre-gessoed canvas? This is what happens. As you can see, the oils have seeped through the canvas on both sides. Had this been a beautiful work of art, the painting would have been destroyed. I highly recommend that with any store-bought pre-gessoed canvas, you give it at least one more coat, and then let it dry overnight. With my canvas dry and now prepared, I can draw an image onto the canvas and give it a light spray with workable fixative. This prevents the pencil marks from smudging, keeps your reference in place without losing it as you paint. Let the spray dry for the recommended time as indicated on the product's label, which is usually 15 minutes. I then like to put my hanging hardware on the back of the canvas. This allows me to remove the painting from my easel and hang it right away, allowing it to dry in a safe place. The hardware I'm using, it's called the Triangle Ring Hanging Picture Hardware and Picture Frame Wire. I usually measure about 3 inches down from the top and place a mark where the triangle ring hooks will be placed. I secure them. Oh, and a super easy way to measure your hanging wire is to take one end and place it at the end of the canvas and stretch it to the other end. Cut the wire and you have a perfectly measured wire for your canvas. And there you go, your canvas is now ready. Oh, this is gonna be fun. Now grab your brush, let's paint. Using burnt sienna and a lot of medium at this point, I start off with a wash and an underpainting to get rid of the white background. This does two things. Firstly, it gets rid of the white canvas, which makes it so much easier to see how colors react with each other as you paint compared to a bright white canvas background which affects your colors by dulling them. The underpainting is also a great way to show where your shadows and darks are going to be placed. It gives you a sense of how your painting is going to turn out. After the underpainting, it's now time to block in the colors. I'll start with the background, then I'll move to the foreground, and then I'll start with the subject matter itself. 
eventually it all gets colored in. I'll fine tune it. I'll refine the colors. I'll add details to it. And eventually the painting will be done. Now, you'll want to clean your brushes properly. There are a couple important steps you want to take to make sure your brushes are clean. Here's the first step. Make yourself a brush washing station by getting yourself a glass sealable jar, and then pick up a handheld strainer from the dollar store. Cut the handle off of the strainer. Flip it over and place it at the bottom of the sealable glass jar. Then pour mineral spirits into the jar until the strainer is completely covered. Now that your painting session is over, brush your paintbrush back and forth on the mesh, and the paint will fall through it leaving your brush almost completely paint-free. Now step two is just as important as the first step. Under room temperature water, don't use hot water. It will more than likely damage the glue inside the furl, which is helping to hold your bristles in place. You can use almost any soap of your choosing. I've always preferred ivory bar soap. Basically, you're just going to brush back and forth till it's nice and clean. Once it's clean, you'll want to leave some soap in the bristles. This keeps the bristles clean and prevents any unseen paint from sticking to your bristles and potentially ruining a good brush. Now the best way to store your brushes is by letting them hang upside down or at an angle. Use a painter's tray with the tips of your brushes pointing downwards. This allows gravity to remove any unwanted liquids like water from building up inside the furl against the wood and bristles, which ultimately damages your brushes. So be sure to store your brushes properly and they'll last much longer. And then when it's time to paint again, take your brush and brush against your leg or your apron and the soap will come out. And now your brush is ready to go. Well, you definitely came a long ways in this video, so be sure to leave any comments or questions you have down below. Hit that subscribe and notification bell, and I'll see you soon.